Come on, real quick, let's give the Lord a voice of joy. Let's give him a voice of praise. Hallelujah. And, and, and that joy was for everything that he's done, everything that he's doing, and watch out, and everything he's about to do. Amen. The Bible, Bible, the Bible gives a strong recommendation. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. And he said, especially when trouble comes, rejoice. Well, I ain't got the money to pay my rent. Rejoice. Somebody says, now, why would you do that? Because it'll strengthen you to allow God to show up and do some exceedingly, abundantly amazing things in your life. Amen. Let's be seated. Let's prepare for communion right now. If you need communion elements, if you'll lift your hands and the ushers will get one into your hands. We, we're doing this in remembrance. We're doing it in remembrance of what Jesus has done for us. And I'll share a little bit of this. We got to be careful not to always go and seek God, asking him, Lord, what do you want me to do? We need to begin to go to God and say, Lord, I'm just going to believe you for what you've already done. You understand what I'm saying? A lot of times, God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to do? God, what do you want me to do? And we forget to put faith in what he's already done. So here's what you do. Believe what he's already done. You remember, you rich young ruler, what do I need to do to have eternal life? He says, don't call me good without calling me God. If you believed in God, you wouldn't be asking what to do. You just believe what's already done. So I want you to remember that throughout the week. The finished works of Jesus Christ are done. And God, I believe you. God, I, I believe you. You know, we sing a song here, you know. You know, he's, it's his breath that's in our lungs. Oh, my goodness. So if it's his breath that's in our lungs, then we ought to pour out praise. It's his breath in our lungs, so we ought to pour out some praise. And I thought about this morning. I said, Lord, it's your breath in my lungs. I got to preach. It's, it's his breath in your lungs. You got to sing. And it's his breath in your lungs. You got to shout. You got to give him praise. You got to thank him. Oh, I felt something on that one, you know. That little Baptist thing came up right around on that side. <laughs> Take the bread which represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. His body, which was broken for you and for me. His body, which was broken so that anything that's broken in your life, in your physical body, your emotions, anything that's broken, he was broken so that through his broken body, you can be healed and made whole. For as often as you eat of this bread, which represents his broken body, do so in remembrance of him you may eat. Take the cup, which represents the blood of Jesus. Thank God for his blood. Where will we be without his blood? His blood has given us a blood-bought right to be righteous and redeemed, to be saved. Jesus walked away from the grave and left it behind. All of the mess in our lives, we can walk away and leave it behind because of the blood of Jesus. For as often as you drink of this cup, do so in remembrance of him, you may drink. Turn to three people and tell them, it is well with me and my house. It is well with me and my house. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise Jesus. Father, thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. 
Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen and amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of St. John, chapter 16. St. John, chapter 16. Uh, we got a little excited last week, so we didn't finish <laughs> what we were talking about. <clears throat> last week, we began to talk about mastering your emotions with peace. Mastering your emotions with peace. Now, we've been talking about the, 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 the soul realm of a man. Man is a spirit. He possesses a soul and he lives in a physical body. Now, what we've said was that you are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Say, I am a spirit being. I have a soul and I live in a physical body. So now knowing that, you understand that when a person dies, their spirit and soul is separated from their physical body. Now the soul compartment, over the years, religion has used spirit and soul interchangeably as if it's the same. It's not. You have a soul. You are a spirit. Say out loud, I am a spirit being. I have a soul. So it's not the same, right? So your soul is made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Your thinker, your filler, your chooser is, is where your soul is. So understand what emotions are because we very rarely hear it taught in church. Emotions are feelings on the inside uh, that are caused by pain or pleasure. Uh, you know, those feelings can be triggered by pain. Those fe feelings can also be triggered by pleasure. So uh, it's, it's, it's emotion, it, emotions are feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure to move you in a direction. Now, the objective of this series is not to, to, to teach you to become emotionless. We've got to make sure we don't go to the extreme in either area. It, 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 God's will is not for you to try as a Christian, well, I'm just not, I'm not going to, I'm going to act like I don't have emotions. You have emotions. God gave them to you. You have emotions, but you never want your life to be controlled by emotions, especially by negative emotions. Now, there are godly emotions. You know, what we're doing this morning will trigger some godly emotions. Uh, the, the, you know, what we just did, it triggered some godly emotions. And praise and worship will trigger some godly emotions. And you know what happens there? It'll move you towards the, the will of God. It'll, it'll direct you towards the path that, that you should walk in and go down. But then how many of you know that we live in this world and there are circumstances and situations, negative circumstances and situations, painful and hurtful circumstances and situations, and if you don't know how to control those negative emotions that are triggered by those circumstances and situations, those negative emotions will be used to move you away from the designed purpose for your life. Everybody in here has a purpose. Everybody in here was born for a reason. There is a job. There's a reason why you're here. I don't know how you got here, but there's a reason why you're here and everybody's got a purpose. And so what you've got to understand is Satan's job is to try to keep you from accomplishing that, pur that purpose. So, of course, there will be lots of situations and circumstances that will come. The Bible says those who live godly shall suffer per persecution. In this world, you will have tribulation. So there's no such thing as saying, well, now that I'm a Christian, I won't have any trouble. Yeah, you're going to have some trouble. But you've got to kind of go back and look precisely. Why, why is all this trouble here? To try to trigger emotions that are negative. So that Satan can ride those emotions uh, like a wave, like a surfer rides a wave and try to, to move you away from that design destiny for your life. So to be a person that doesn't know how to, how to experience self-control is a person that's authorizing your life to be moved in a direction opposite to where God wants you to go. Self-control is a gift from God. And it is designed to take you to the place where he's designed for your life. So maybe sometimes you wonder, well, what is it I'm supposed to be doing? How come it's not happening? I, I would ask you to go and look at, look at your emotions. Have they mostly been negative 
And are they controlling you rather than you controlling them? Is life mastering you or are you mastering life? Is life happening to you? And that's what a lot of people do because the, the word, really the thinking of the day is you can't help how you feel. That's what most people say. If you listen carefully, if you listen carefully, people will say, well, I can't help that I feel like this. And that is the thing Satan wants to put on in, in your thinking. I can't help I feel like this. I can't help I feel this way. And this series has, first of all, been designed to show you, you are accountable for how you feel. And you can help how you feel. In every situation that happens, you can take authority over your emotions. You can take authority over how you feel. You don't have to act like a fool and end up being put in jail somewhere and your whole life is messed up. And Satan say, I got them locked up. So, hey, but let me tell you something, folks. Let me tell you something. You can control your feelings. You can control your emotions. And when you do that, you set your life up and set it in a course where you're going to a place of seeing the designed purpose for your life. And you'll never know what I'm saying is true unless you begin to employ self-control and employ this, this, this willingness to say, God, I'm going to become spiritually minded because if I'm not spiritually minded, I'm going to be carnally minded. And if I'm carnally minded, it equals death. If I'm spiritual minded, it equals life. Well, how do I become spiritually minded? By getting in God's word and allowing his word to renew my mind. And as I allow his word to renew my mind, I become spiritually minded, which means I am now subject to life and peace. But if I am led by my emotions and if I am in bondage to my senses, I'm dominated by my senses. I see something and what I see is true, but then it dominates my whole life. I see something and I mean it's painful and it's hurtful and I let it get in my emotions and it dominates my life. You're not to be dominated by your senses. Your senses were given to you so you can enjoy life, but you're not to be dominated by them. And you have to be careful not to even allow those things to get in your thought life because what happens is you're delivered, you're saved, you're a new creature, but all of a sudden you're, you're allowing your past thoughts and regrets to haunt you. How many of you know it's time to go forward? Yeah, you did it. Yeah, it was messed up. Yeah, you hurt some people, but it's time to go forward. Turn to the neighbor and say, go forward. You got to walk away from those things because that's all Satan has in your life. He's got your past and he's trying to keep reeling you back to your past. And in your past, if you're not careful <clears throat> to remember your past can also trigger some of those negative emotions of the past. And you got to say, no, I'm not going back there. And every time you, you find yourself kind of, you know, slipping back there, you got to catch yourself and say, no, that's not who I am right now. Praise God. And you got to get in the word so the word can, 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 can trigger those, those godly emotions. There are lots of Christians that sit, they sit at home and they think about all the mess they used to be in. And, they, and what the enemy wants to do is to finally get you to blame yourself for where you are. But you got to stand up and remind yourself, I'm the righteousness of God. And yes, it was messy. But my God has come and he has cleaned up the mess. And you got to go forward. You got to go forward. And the way to do that, ladies and gentlemen, here's the ultimate thing I want you to hear is that we cannot be Christians that are just hungry to be inspired. Hey, I love inspiration and God's word is inspiring. But I'm talking about we play church. We just go to church and we get an inspiring message, but we don't know nothing. There is no scenario where you're going to be a successful Christian without understanding the word of God. And I'm not talking about, when I go to church or I read my Bible every day, do you understand what you readeth? Well, I went to church. Did you understand what was preached? The Bible says, no, you're getting, get what? Understanding. understanding. And there's no scenario in this Christian life that makes you successful if you don't understand God's word and don't get in it. So, yeah, I'm all for inspiration. I, listen, there are some gifts in the body of Christ that are designed to inspire people. People need to be inspired. But you just can't live off candy. Amen. 
you got to go to bed on Saturday night so you can come and get some collard greens and some vegetables. And, and, and you, you understand what I'm saying? You can't just live off candy. You can't come to church and we just say stuff that tickles your ears and make you happy and put the organ and give you a show. Sometimes you got to sit yourself down and go from one scripture to another and say, yeah, got it. And go to another one. Yeah, got it. What am I doing? We're downloading some things into your software. So when the devil shows up, you, you, you show up with something that more than a scream and a holler and a shout, you show up with the intelligence of knowing what to do when that devil shows up to try to destroy your life. And you tell him, oh, I'm not an uninformed Christian. You want to dance with me? Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. What? No, just sit down. You started this thing. You want some of me? Just sit down. My God, I felt that. That's a godly emotion right there, boy. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? And so this is why it's important to, you know, to get in the word. And now, 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 now the other stuff, you know, you know, I remember doing that. I mean, the other stuff then, they give pretty, pretty big crowds. You know, the other stuff, you know, it fill it up. And, you know, I remember Madison Square Garden, 17,000 people all over the country, all over the world. And then I made my mind up. I said, this ain't doing no good. <clears throat> Seven million miles. And then I go back around and it seemed like I got to teach everything all over again. Why? Because I had to give, I thought I had to give them some vegetables and a little icing too. <laughs> no, today I have made my mind up that I only preach to those who have ears to hear. Amen. Not everybody has ears to hear and I am fine with that. But those of you who have ears to hear, that's what I'm here. Those of you who are going to nod and sleep and wait on a little ice cream and cake to come up, you, you might need to go somewhere else, boy, because we're going to eat this word and you're going to get so much word that you feel like biting the back out of the chair in front of you. Amen. Amen. So let's get going. John 16, verse 33. Let's talk about how to master your emotions how to master your emotions with peace. Let's read verse 33 out loud together. Ready, read. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have what? Peace. You might have peace. So now notice what he said. He says, I said what he, and you'll notice a close relationship between peace and joy. That's why I want to teach them right behind each other. He said, I said what I said so that, so that you might have peace. Again, it is your decision to get into that word, to let the word get into you. And he says that word in you is going to cause peace. I, I, I double dog Dino Scooby Doo dare you. The next time you're feeling down to open that Bible up or go get you a CD or go to YouTube or something and listen to a, uh, listen to a word and get that word in you, it'll change how you feel. Yes. I said it'll change how you feel. Yes. One more time, what you, what you expose yourself to is going to determine the way you think. The way you think is going to determine how you feel. So how you feeling is based on what you've been thinking. How you feeling is based on what you've been thinking. Depression is based on what you've been thinking. Suicidal thoughts based on what you've been thinking. Loneliness based on what you've been thinking. What you've been thinking. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. What you've been thinking. Yeah, that, that matters. What have you been thinking? You, you, you stay away from the word for a minute and find yourself exposed to other stuff. You, you, will, you will, sometimes you won't even realize, oh, I'm feeling different. Why? Because you're thinking different. What you've been thinking about? What have you been exposing yourself to? This is real stuff. This is stuff that this generation doesn't even understand. They're, they're, they're just stuck. They're just like, I don't even know what's happening, why it's happening. It is what it is. And they settle with that. And watch this. There is no resistance. When you don't understand why a thing is the way it is, then you'll settle for it and there'll be no resistance. And so God has called us to actively resist once we understand the will of God for our lives. Once you know it's God's will for you to be successful in every area and for your body to keep well and for your relationships to be successful, once you understand those kind of things, you will actively resist 
when something comes against you. But if you don't understand the will of God for your life and you don't know why you are where you are, you won't put up an active resistance to those things. And what happens? And then you slowly ignore the source of your peace, the source of your joy. You get stuck somewhere and don't even know what's going on. Therefore, you don't even know what to do to get out. And so your first option is not to get in the word. Your first option is to try to find out why I feel like I feel. Or maybe I need to go see my therapist. Or maybe I need to do all these other things because you're not understanding. You're not understanding what's going on with your life because you're not reading the manual of instruction that God has given to you, which lets you know that if you're exposing yourself to something, that's why I said attend to my word. You're exposing yourself to other things. Those other things are determining how you think. The way you think is determining how you feel. Now, all of it's intangible so far. But now, now that we're at your feeling area, your feelings now can move those very, that diseasement. It can be moved from, how you, from your emotions and it can become something that begins to develop in your very life. Now, all of a sudden, the way you feel determines the decisions you make. So now you're making your decisions based on how you, what you're being exposed to, what you're thinking, and how you feel. Now you're making your decisions on that. You're not making decisions based on God and his word. You're making your decisions based on how you feel. Now, how many of you know emotional decisions don't ever lead to a good place? Amen. You're making decisions on how you feel. And, you know, people get divorced because they're making a decision on how they're feeling. You, you know, you, you, what you do with your children, make a decision on how you feel. What, what you do with the job, make a decision on how you feel. And then you make those emotional decisions. And how many of you know that decisions, decision is an open door into reality. It will become a reality once you make the decision. And the enemy says, I need to expose you to the wrong thing so you can think the wrong thing, so you can feel the wrong way, so you can make the wrong decision. And then I can take you to the destiny that I want you to go to. And people don't know what to do. They don't understand. I mean, I never thought I would see the day that there would be real bona fide strife that would show up because you were a Democrat or a Republican. What the heck is that? You know, a long time ago, it wasn't nobody business. Who'd you vote for? Well, you know, that's private there. But now somebody find out you got the wrong party. They might stop being your friend. All right. I had, and no, no, yeah, that's right. This, I'm not talking about the world. This happened in the church. I had a couple who was a, 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 a partner, a long partner with this ministry. And we were in London. And, and Taffy had a bag that had a, a, a certain party name on it and a certain candidate pent on her bag. And somebody took a picture in church and posted it online and they contacted us and said we can no longer partner with your ministry because of your party affiliations. Yeah. First of all, it wasn't my party affiliation, but you assumed it, but you let that strife yes. and that division come up over that. Certainly grace has got to be much greater than that. You a Christian? And you let political division divide you and you a Christian? I would say shame on you, but I, I'm not going to use what the world is using to come against people right now. You know what the world is using? If I can't put you in jail, I'm going to shame you. And there's a consequence for that. There's a consequence. The whole thing in this society right now, here, forget about innocent to proven guilty. Forget about all of that. If it even looked like it might be true, based on my bias, I'm going to shame you. That's what the world's doing. That's what that the, the consequence for any who and we got great leaders in the world, great leaders in the body of Christ. But who wants to go through that? Who wants to go through that? I'm gonna shame you. I'm gonna shame. And that's why as Christian, you cannot you 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 have to believe in God so you won't be put yeah. to shame. Yep. Yes. Amen. Hey, I know what I'm talking about. They've been trying to shame me ever since I started walking in my calling. But I believe in Jesus. Therefore, I cannot be put to shame.
you got to keep showing up. You can't let somebody shame you out of your calling, shame you out of what God called you to do, shame you out of your prosperity, shame you out of your promotion, shame you out of what God has called you to do. You can't deal with it. And the whole world right now is operating in two of the most demonic weapons I thought I'd never see, but I should have known because God told me there are two things that are operating in this world and they can't even see it. Shame and mammon. But not us. We know too much. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know too much. I know too much to be shamed, and I know too much to be led by the spirit of mammon. Money ain't gonna move me. You know, every now and then we get them phone calls. You know, I'll give the church $10,000, da 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 da. No, 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 no. Money ain't got nothing to do with it. Does God want us to do it? No. Keep your money. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had I had people come I had people come to me calling me, sending me money to try to get me to come preach at their church. You can't you can't I, that ain't how I decide to go preach somewhere. I work for Jesus. Hey Jesus, should I go to that church and preach? And if you say no, it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> I had one guy to send me money. I sent it back to him. I said, sir, I, 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 I can't be bought. I, I'm not moved by a financial thing, you know. And, and it, it was a nice check. I can't be bought, though. It was nice. And when I sent it back, I, I had some, you know, like that. <laughs> you know, I had some, well, maybe the Lord won't this. You know how we do. Maybe the Lord won't that. Maybe the Lord. Not. But, but I, that, that, I made a commitment. That Jesus determines my itinerary, not somebody trying to send me some money to come. I'm not going to do that. Well, what happened? I won't allow money. I won't allow my money to lead me because that's the spirit of mammon. And the spirit of mammon says, don't trust God and don't need God. Trust money. And I'm not going to do that because when I'm in need, the Holy Ghost for 37 years, the Holy Spirit has already taken care of me. And while some people are losing their churches and they can't afford to do that and can't afford this, you are sitting in, on a property that has been paid for, praise God. We owe no man nothing but to love him, and that came by God. I'm not going to do it. All right, enough of that. How we got over there. There's some stuff getting ready to happen. I, heard, I got a word for the Lord for concerning 2019. There's some stuff getting ready to happen. And you got to make sure you don't allow the enemy or anybody else to bring you in a dry season. Amen. A dry season is all about I don't trust God no more. Mm. And a lot of that's going on. I meet people who like, I don't trust God no more. I meet people who say, I-, I used to go to your church. I just don't trust them no more. Well, why don't you trust them no more because this person died or that happened or that happened like they weren't going to have no trouble. The problem is they were overcome by trouble. They were troubled by trouble because they didn't have They didn't know enough. Oh, they, they didn't know enough. Oh, they, they didn't know enough. Yeah, they didn't know enough. That's the reason why a whole lot of people suffer. You don't know enough. I did all I knew to do. You didn't know enough. What you knew to do wasn't enough. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. So how long we got it? In the world. That's how we got that. In the world. (laughs) Now you live in this world. You live in this world. And God's giving you instructions. See, the last thing you need to be doing is 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 getting mad and dogging the president out. Because you can't have but one at a time. So you might as well pray in tongues. <laughs> Every time you think about something, just pray in tongues because that's what you're supposed to be doing. That's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be praying for whoever. You're supposed to be praying for whoever is in office. That's the job. I hadn't agreed with everybody that's been in office. But I've agreed with God to pray for whoever in office. And that's just too much stupid talk coming out of the mouth of Christian people. Pray. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Praying. 
pray. You got two things you can do. Pray or run yourself. <laughs> Other than that, you need to shut up. The spirit of division comes because we allow it. Pray. Pray against this spirit of division. Division amongst uh, races. Division amongst uh, uh, different sexes. Division amongst management and labor. Division everywhere. You sit around, oh, Lord, what are we going to do? And then let, let that get in your head. And then that, let that get in your emotions. And, and you've already been given your assignment. Yeah. You pray for those who are in office. Yeah. You pray that there may be peace and wisdom. You pray that God, God will do this and God will do that. You don't, you don't become political. Yeah. You pray and God will handle it. Yeah. God I said, God will handle it. Yeah. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Pisces or an Aquarius. I am a Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and my Savior. You know, people, when were you born then? Ooh, you an Aquarius. You Aquarius. I ain't no Aquarius. Come on. <laughs> Doggone and I am a Christian. I'm a Christian, praise God. I got Jesus living on the inside of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, Pastor, they had a shooting at a synagogue last night. You don't want to try that here. No. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, you don't never want to try that here. <laughs> this is the most dangerous time in human history. But let the redeemed of the Lord say so and that's we got to do more we got to do more of what we're supposed to be doing praying divine protection pleading the blood of Jesus hallelujah declaring Psalms 91 they dwell we dwell in the secret place of the most high the shadow of the almighty a thousand shall come at my ten thousand at my right but it shall not come near me. The most powerful weapon you possess is your mouth. Loaded with the word of God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I better get started. We won't finish this week. But see, I work for him. I'm, you know, I had a notes, you know, but, but, you know, when you spend time praying in the Holy Ghost and stuff like that, he deposits stuff in you that he might not reveal until you start talking. So I ain't got time to think about whether or not I'm going to say that. You understand what I'm saying? Because if I'd have thought about whether or not to say this and put it in my note, I probably wouldn't have said it. But I said it. Now, tell Quita and them that. All right, so in the world, you're going to have trouble. How many are convinced you're going to have some trouble in this world? Yeah. All right, but here's what he said. He said, be of good cheer. Why? He says, I've overcome the world. I've already taken care of it. It's taken care of. It's, it's taken care of. Have you ever seen this, this, uh, this series? It's called the, the list. What's that thing called? Uh, the blind list? What is it? Yeah? The black list? Remy seemed like he got everything taken care of. It's taken care of. I remember the time when I was fishing over on the boat and threw my line out there. It was a marvelous day and all of these wonderful things come out and he tells these little stories and then he just kind of ends up with, it's handled. Here's what will bring you peace in the midst of trouble. Knowing that no matter what the circumstances were, it's handled. It's handled. Yeah, but Brother Dolly, you don't understand. It's handled. Yeah, but I feel it's handled. We don't move by how we feel. We move by what the word says. And I can have peace in the word that will tell me over and over again, it's handled. 
It's done. It's finished. Have peace. It's finished. It's finished. Yeah, but the doctor said I'm going to be dead in two weeks. Do you want to die in two weeks? No. Well, it's handled. Believe. It's finished. You're healed. Yeah, I lost my job. Yeah, but you've been praying. You've been praying for a six-figure salary. And he's been trying to give you the six-figure salary. But he can't do that because you're still stuck at the job that you don't want to leave. Because you're scared if you leave that job, you might not have nothing. And so now that you don't have no job, watch this. It's handled. Doesn't that bring peace? Now, look at Psalms 34, verse 14, and then Colossians 3, 15. Psalms 34, 14, and then Colossians 3, 15. Peace. Peace. The Hebrew word is shalom. That Hebrew word shalom comes from this word shalom, which means uh, there's, there's no presence of war. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's fullness. It's, it's completeness. It's wholeness. Nothing missing and nothing broken. Peace. Shalom. The absence of a conflict. War. Fullness. Completeness. Wholeness. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Verse 14 says, depart from evil, do good, seek peace and pursue it. Seek it. Turn to your name and say, seek peace. Seek peace. Turn to the other side and say, pursue it. pursue it. Go after peace. Go after peace. If your life right now is not in a peaceful place, he said, seek it, pursue it. I'm seeking peace. That's why I'm at church this morning. I'm seeking peace. That's why I'm in my word. I'm seeking peace. That's why I spend time praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm seeking peace. That's why I got these two scriptures I'm meditating on today. I'm seeking peace. I'm pursuing it. Because you don't know what I had to go through. And you don't know what's going on. And you don't know I'm sitting in this thing. But I'm not going to let it overcome me. I'm seeking peace in the middle of this stuff. I'm going to pursue peace. I'm not going to pursue, you know, you know, worry and concern. I'm going to pursue peace. And that's why I do this. That's why I'm sitting here today. I'm pursuing peace. Now, watch this, Colossians chapter 3. I want to read it in the King James and then the Amplified. Colossians 3, 15. The, the peace of God, the peace of God can become your guide. If you ever want to know if you're going in the right place, if you ever want to know is this the right thing to do, if you ever want to know if this is the right person to marry, if you ever want to know if this is the right job to have, peace can become your guide. So I'm going to say, how do you figure? Well, look at this. Verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you are called in one body, and be thankful. The peace of God ruling in your heart. Have you ever been in a time where you were in the middle of a crossroad, and there was no peace to go right, but there was a lot of peace to go to left? And the peace of God was ruling in your heart. That's, that's God. That's, you can, you can, if you follow peace, you're going to follow God. That's why God's against all the clutter in your head and in your heart. There's so much clutter going on, you can't hear. He says, let peace rule in your heart. Look at this in the Amplified. And let peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule and act as an umpire continually. Oh, my goodness. Peace can act like an umpire. If you're familiar with baseball, an umpire calls it a ball, a strike. He's an umpire. He calls it like he sees it. <laughs> I said he calls it like he sees it. And so does Jesus. God calls it like he sees it, but he's not looking at it the way you're looking at it. And so it says, let peace be an umpire in your life. Peace will tell you that's out. Peace will tell you that's safe. Peace will say, no, that's the wrong way. Peace will say, that's the right way. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. But how can peace rule in your heart when you don't have any? You see why the enemy wants to rob you and clutter your mind with a bunch of stuff? Because you have an umpire. You have an umpire. 
I tell you what, man, when we can tap into what the umpire is saying and the wisdom of God is saying, you'll know what to do when you don't know what to do. Let peace rule in your heart. Let it act like an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your mind. In that peaceful state to which, as a member of Christ, one body, he says, you were also called to live and to be thankful, be appreciative, giving praise to God always. So now, giving praise to God always, that's going to lead you into peace. I tell you right now, walking and practicing the presence of God produces peace in you. Peace is going to come out of you walking and practicing the presence of God. If you're not peaceful, you've got you to walk and practice the presence of God. And listen to me carefully now. Like an umpire. There have been times in my life, there are decisions that were there, and I'm like, okay, all right, Lord, what do you want me to do? I can't, I can't hear from God. And I'm cluttered with, with all kinds of care. <clears throat> all kinds of care. That's why I said cast all your care upon him because what he cares. How many believe God cares for you? Amen. Well, why are you worried today? There's no one worry. You can raise your hands and say, I believe God cares for me. And you carry the care. Do you know it's an act of pride when God says cast care on him and you carrying it? You know what you're saying? I'm not going to cast no care on you because I don't trust that you're able to deal with the care. So I'm going to keep it myself. You know, Bible says he gives grace to the humble. Do you know it's an act of pride for you to go around here walking around worried and full of care about baby need a pair of shoes, look, you got a light bill, dude, telephone disconnect, uh, y'all don't know what's going on, my children. You can't be carrying that care around. You want to do your kids a favor? Cast the care of your children over on the Lord. But you're not going to do that because I can't see how that's going to help nothing. That, that's right. I told you you don't know enough. Quit sleeping in church. You don't know enough. You cast all your care on him because he cares for you enough to work out what you can't work out. How is it that we can become professional warriors? You know what worry is? It's, it's a negative meditation on the things of, of, of death. The medita meditating on the things of the enemy. Meditating on all the wrong stuff. That's what worry is. And if you can worry, you can meditate on God's word. But we don't do it. Some people, like it's a badge of honor. Well, I'm just worried. That's what I do. I worry. Well, now we see why, why everybody where they are. Because of you. Don't do me no favor. That's why when I was diagnosed with cancer, I ain't tell nobody. I didn't want nobody messing up what I, what I needed to accomplish. I, you know how folks are, well, you know, the pastor got cancer, and then I got three or four people agreeing in worry. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, you tweeting out, he died, he died. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Don't do me no favors. If you can't pray in tongues and speak the word of God and agree with me based on the finished works of Jesus Christ, I don't want your help. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let peace rule. Get it in your heart. Get it in you. See, because if peace is not there, the worry is going to trigger a negative emotion. It's going to move you farther away from where you need to be. The worry produces dis-ease. You keep worrying, the dis-ease that you carry all day long will produce disease. Same word. One of the major culprits of Chronic sickness and disease is stress. Can't let stuff go. Can't let it go. And it's already handled, but you can't let it go. And you feel bad and you're treating people bad because you clutter. Hey, how you doing? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You clutter. <laughs> Can't let it go. Your cortisol levels begin to raise. Your cells begin to close up. You start overworking your mitochondria. 
Some I said, Mata who? Where'd that come from? <laughs> Looking at We got one of them? Yeah, yeah, yeah we. <laughs> and you don't think it's a big deal. You just think you're supposed to worry. You don't think it's possible that you can wake up and be in peace in the middle of a hard time. Do you understand I'm qualified to teach this? To wake up in peace in the middle when it's, when it, when it's hard. At times I don't, I don't have any choice. Either, either I am going to collapse under this. Or I'm going to let the peace of God rule. You, you, don't, you don't know how to feel. You walk out. You walk outside in the middle of being persecuted and people start taking pictures of you and calling your names. Your kids come home crying because of what they heard. And you just have to stand in what God said and believe that one day the lie that was believed and the narrative that was created that the truth would be told. And that God will be your vindication. Well, you know, they eventually vindicated you. Yeah, but wasn't nobody watching the news that day. Have they let peace come? I'm convinced to this day. One of the reasons I, 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 I got cancer is because I let my guard down. And when that traumatic thing happened to me, it, it hit. It didn't take long. The, the trauma of it sh- put me in shock. Just long enough for that thing to rise up. And I realized what had happened and realized that the peace of God can, can fight against that. But believe me, emotional diseasement will cause chronic disease. And peace is the antidote. Some of y'all got to be careful. Because if you get to that place where you lack peace and you stay in that state, you start having crazy thoughts. I just don't want to live no more. You don't mean that. You don't even understand. Yeah, I do. I just don't want it no more. I'm tired. I'm tired. You are not that tired. You better, you better get you a blow pop and chew it and chew that chewing gum. You ain't ready to die like you think. Well, Brother Dollar, I know I go to heaven. Well, we're telling you all we know. We, we, we hope we got it right. You better. I ain't trying to get out of here no sooner than what I need to get out of here. And it'll be all right. Well, what do you recommend I do until it be all right? Go to bed, wake up, go to bed, wake up, go to bed, wake up. And keep doing that. It'll be all right one of them days you wake up. But do not kill yourself. Go to bed, wake up, go to bed, wake up. It'll get better because trouble don't last always and whatever you're going through has an expiration date and I declare your expiration date is at hand. You are not going to be going through this all your life. So you might as well go ahead and shout because it's handled, praise God. It's handled. Well, I felt that thing. Boy, had I stretched out this morning, I'd take off running on that one right there, but I, I ain't stretched out. Oh, I'm just got healed. I don't want to run, spring something. Like, God, what happened? I didn't tell you to run. All right, look at 2 Corinthians 13 and 11. Let's look at this in the King James and Amplify. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and 11. Peace, wholeness. Fullness. Peace is also a lack of care and stress in the middle of trouble. No care, no stress, no anxiety, 
in the middle of trouble. And rather than that, you release your faith that I'm whole. You know what it means to be whole? There is nothing missing and nothing broken. You know you have to receive that by faith. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All is well. I'm whole. Say it, I'm whole. I'm whole. Nothing missing, nothing broken. All is well. All right, now watch this. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Whoa. Whoa. Look at the connection. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Live in peace and the God of love and peace. I believe that with all my heart. Every time I achieve peace from the word of God, I find myself in the presence of God. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. Glory be to God. Now look at this in the Amplified. Live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. How many of you want to have the assurance that the God of love and peace is with you? Amen. And how do you know you need him with you when you're in trouble? Amen. Somebody says, well, I'm not in trouble. Not today. <laughs> but you're still in this world. Right. Uh -huh. Finally, brethren, farewell. Now look what he said here. Rejoice. Ooh, there's something there. He's telling us what to do when trouble comes. Rejoice. Be strengthened. Why? Look why he said rejoice. Be strengthened. Because the joy of the Lord is your what? Your strength. Joy doesn't come. Joy comes by what you know. Happiness is based on how you feel. Joy comes by what you know. Happiness is based on your comfort. Joy comes by what you know. And if you keep your joy, you'll eventually get happy. Be strengthened. Perfect it. Okay, I see this now. Rejoice, be complete, be perfected, made what you ought to be. Okay, so here's what you ought to be. Complete, perfected, whole. Now that's the will of God. So now knowing the will of God now, also let you know when that's not so, I actively resist that and by faith receive that. So when you're worried or down, you know that's not God's will. So by faith, you declare, I am strengthened. I am perfected. I am whole. I am complete. All is well. You say all is well when it's not well. Was that the Shunammite woman who said that? Here's her son dead. She goes downstairs after putting her dead son's body on the bed. And her husband said, is everything all right? And here's what she said. All is well. I'm, I'm convinced what happens in our lives is based on how we respond when we're in trouble. And we're not responding correctly. We're responding according to the circumstance. We're responding according to the circumstance that triggered the emotion. We're, res we're responding that way. Look what he says. Be completed. Be made what you ought to be. Be encouraged and consoled and comforted. Be of the same agreeable mind, one with another, and live in peace. Oh, my God. And then the God of love, who is the source of affection, goodwill, love, and benevolence toward men, and the author and promoter of peace. Oh, my God, the author and the promoter of peace. God authors it and he promotes it. That's why I want to get in the word. That's why I want to get into his presence. The author and the promoter of peace will be with you. Hallelujah. Look at St. John 14, 27. St. John 14, 27. Praise God. Well founded confidence in the midst of trouble. Man. I, there, you cannot be in the presence of God and not be in peace. You cannot be in peace and not be in the presence of God. 
What is he trying to do? What is the enemy trying to do by disrupting your life? You don't find peace. Even, you're, even now that you're born again, washed in the blood of the lamb, then you spend all your time thinking about what you used to do. What you used to do, you don't do no more, baby. Let it go. Turn to your neighbor and say, let it go. Let it go. Turn to the other side and say, be free. easier said than done. Well, the Apostle Paul had to get over murdering people. Jesus took on the sins of the whole world and had to go forward. Stop using that as an excuse. As human beings, we've got to stop doing these two things. Stop using an excuse and blaming people for your problems and stop trying to change the rules to fit your issue. That's what we do. See, if you're, if you're caught up in an addictive behavior, you try to change the rules to make it fit your, your behavior. Make excuses. Well, it's his fault. Or Mom and daddy didn't raise me right. Or, uh, you know, once, once you get old, once you become an adult, mom and daddy, whatever they didn't do, you better meet Jesus. Because <laughs> mom and daddy, they might agree. Oh, no, we ain't do good at all. We, we, we messed up. But Jesus said, I'm here. I'm your mom and your daddy. And whatever they didn't do right, I got you. Well, I, I, I just never felt like I was loved. Well, I'm, I'm going to love you now. Well, I, I just wasn't never taught nothing. Well, I'm, I'm your teacher. See, quit trying to make excuses and blame other people. 27. Peace I leave with you. Oh, me. Here's what Jesus said. He says, I leave with you peace. Who peace? He said, my peace. My peace I give you. So he's talking about shalom here. You know, I found it very interesting that that Hebrew word shalom is also translated prosperity. Mm-hmm. So you thought it was just talking about money. When he talks about prospering you, He's talking about you being what you ought to be, whole. Being what you ought to be, full and complete. See, every time most people hear prosperity, they think money. You're not incorrect, but you are incomplete. Because prosperity is not just money. Prosperity is talking about your wholeness. Wholeness in your spirit is called born again. Wholeness in your mind is renewed. Wholeness in your body is well. But mammon got you so, so, so focused on it, you can't, you can't receive the wholeness of it. It, it. Money is never going to be the sum total of the definition of prosperity. Amen. Why? Because I know people with money who are dying of cancer. Amen. Money can buy you a house, but it can't get you a home. Money can get you a little friend for the night, but it can't get you a relationship that you can depend on for life. That's not what he's talking about when he says prosperity. Money can buy you medicine, can't it? But it can't buy you healing. God says, here's what you ought to be. Whole. Sound. Complete. Peace. And it cannot buy you peace. Amen. I apologize for all these years of people misunderstanding, but that, that whole rise up against money is mammon trying to say, don't you let these people talk you into using this money to support the gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm just still trying to figure out, you know, how are you so prosperous? Because I give like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. That's why. Don't ever criticize my harvest if you don't know my seed. You don't know my seed. Well, what is your seed? None you? None you what? None your business. 
You wouldn't believe it if I told you. But I believe. God wants me whole. But it's never going to be the material that's going to make you whole. Seriously? If the, if, listen, if the material made you whole and you started trusting in, in materials more than you trusted in God, you would now be guilt, guilty of materialism. Materialism doesn't mean having materials. Materialism means that you're having trust and you rely and lean on materials rather than relying and, re and leaning on God. So when you feel depressed, you go shopping to try to deal with your depression instead of going to Jesus. We, we've just bungled it all up because we didn't get in the word. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. The peace that God gives is wholeness. The peace that God gives is shalom. Amen. The peace that God gives is nothing missing and nothing broken. So if there's anything missing and anything broken in your life, that's where you release your faith. You start resisting those things that are missing and say, wait a minute, I come against that in the name of Jesus. I, I, by faith, I receive wholeness in my life. By faith, I believe, I, I receive completeness in my life. By faith, I declare that there's nothing missing and nothing broken in my life. And you declare that by faith. Yeah. The just shall live by faith. You declare that. Your mouth is your most powerful weapon. Amen. And what you don't say, you don't see. Amen. I said, what you don't say, you don't see. Amen. I said, and what you don't say, you don't see. Go to Genesis, and God said, 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 and then you look at the end of it, he said, and God saw. What did he see? Everything he said. You're sitting around keeping your mouth closed, putting up with, and letting the devil beat the snot out of you instead of using your most powerful weapon. And don't ever, and, oh, and, and be, watch out, to put tongues in this mouth. Oh, Lord, have mercy. This is a powerful thing. You don't read nothing in the Bible that happened if somebody didn't say it. And then he said, let the redeem. Who to redeem? We are. Say so. And we still won't say nothing. I don't want nobody to hear me. I don't want nobody to think I'm one of them religious freaks. See, your problem is, is you, you in bondage to people, which is the worst kind of bondage in the world, being in bondage to what somebody think about you. And you can't ever do what God wants you to do because you're too scared of what everybody going to think when they see you do what you believe God wants you to do. You got to get free from people. You know, being in bondage to people, that'll rob you of your peace. You can't hardly go, you can't hardly go shopping right because you're thinking about what somebody going to think about what you're getting ready to buy. That's crazy. That's bondage. That's bondage. You can't even, you can't even ride right because you're scared what people are going to think. Lord, if they see me in this car, they're going to think. Well, I remember that. I mean, I, remember, I, I encountered that. I thought I never encountered that. I don't, well, I don't know what year it was, but uh, the church gave me a, a Rolls Royce, what, 10, 20 years ago? And... Man, that Rolls Royce was sitting out there. I, my heart started beating fast. Like, I can't drive that. My last name, Dollar. Well, you know what they're going to think. If I, if I drive that Rolls Royce, they see me driving that Rolls Royce and my last name, Dollar, them people going to think I've been stealing money from the church. And they did. And they did. <laughs> and not only did they do it, I think I told y'all a story about a friend of mine called me. He was a pastor. And he was all hysterical. Just, uh, listen, just tell me, I'm your friend. Uh, no matter what you say, I'm your friend. I said, well, what are you talking about? He said, well, just tell me if it's true. And I'm like, what? He said, you know, one pastor just told me, and they're getting ready to put it on the news and everything, that, 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 that your cameras in the church caught you stealing $30,000 from the church. <laughs> and, and that the police pick you up, and you're in jail right now. I said, <laughs> I smiled, and I said, God, no. <laughs> I said, okay, so first of all, I'm in Florida. <laughs> I'm getting ready to go and preach. I said, I have not stolen $30,000. $30,000? I'm going to steal $30,000 from my church knowing where the camera's at. <laughs> How they say on the house, why? Boy, bye. <laughs> How? But people, they make up these kind of things. And so anyway, I, was, I, I got that car, man, and 
Oh my gosh. Man, it was, it was a big night, man. It was just a big night. We had a, we had a good time, man. It, things were going on. I, I, you might, I don't know if you had a fight that night or something like that, because we always trying to rush back home and order the fight on TV and, you know, popcorn and everything. We hear about praying tongues. We, we made it out of serious revival. You understand what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I can't drive that car. And I kept it for a while, and God dog it, it got out. The news created the narrative. Preacher buys a Rolls Royce, and the story changed. They buys a Rolls Royce, and I got about three or four Rolls Royces, and it just kept changing. And so I was doing an interview with 2020 or somebody, and they bought the Rolls Royce up. And that spirit of mammon got on me, and, and I said, well, you know what? I'm, I'm selling the Rolls Royce, and I'm going to take the money, and I'm going to give it to the children's ministry. Oh, that sounds so noble, just what they wanted to hear. And I sold it, did what I said I was going to do, and the word of the Lord came to me through a prophet. He said, I gave you that because I was expressing my love and my, my care for you, and you sold a gift that I gave you because you were afraid of what they were going to say about you. Oh, my God. Oh, I can't tell you how my whole inside just melted us. Oh, my God. And I said, God, oh, God, forgive me. I called Jeremy and I said, now, I don't care what you do. You, you know, because Jeremy know all kinds of folks everywhere, you know. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I don't care what you do. Okay, how you get it done? Get, find that car. I said, find it, we're going to buy it back, and I, 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 I never do that again. He called me, he says, we got it. I said, get it back here. Man, I got that car back, Lord have forgiven me, and I said, Lord, thank you for this gift. Listen, wait, 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 I got in that car, I rolled the window down. We used to go to the park. I got in that car, I leaned, you remember, you, remember, you remember how they used to do them big broham? <laughs> Passed by this truck, he said, wah, wah. I said, the blessing, brother, the blessing. And I made my mind up, I will never be so in bondage to people that I can't receive some goodness that God's trying to give me. I don't care what you think. Well, preacher, I'll not be driving that car. I don't care what you think. Praise God. He's blessed me. This is what I ought to be. I am not going to deny his blessing because you got a problem with it. God just wanted to show the world that I can bless a black man just like I can bless a white man, just like I can bless an Iran man. I can bless any man that'll believe me and express my love to them. You want to lead the church over that? Lead the church over that. But that's what stops a whole lot of people from entering into a place where God wants you to be. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know I'm not saying, I'm not saying, well, if you be good, God will give you a rose royce. That ain't what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. The blessing is not in the material. It is being whole. Whether you drive a Volkswagen or a Rolls Royce, that you have peace. That you have peace. And you ought not drive anything that robs your peace. And you ought not live in anything that robs your peace. And if you live in a mansion and you can't pay for it and you're worried every time the first of the month come up and you all stressed out, 
You need to get out of that thing that's robbing you of your peace, and you need to go get something that's going to give you some peace. And if a $100,000 house, $80,000 house can give you a peace, that's what you need to do. Quit trying to pretend like you're somebody else. Quit looking at all these reality shows because they ain't got no peace. A lot of them ain't got no peace at all. You get you some peace, and the God of peace and love will be with you, praise God. I'd rather live in a shack being in love with my wife than to live in a mansion and we in strife every day. What you know about a shack? Plenty. See, you, you, you're trying to look at me from where I am and you don't know where I have come from. I don't know where you've come from, but I got to believe that God has bought you from a mighty long way. I believe that some of you might have been in a ditch, but God reached down and he lifted you up out of that ditch and he plants your feet on a solid ground and he put a new word on the inside of your mouth and I believe you cast your care upon him and he cares for you and I'm telling you that you got brighter days coming. It's going to be all right. I'm telling you right now, your trouble ain't going to last always. I'm telling you right now that he will lift you up. He will bring you out and the God of peace and love shall be with you and I declare over your life all is well <laughs> hallelujah somebody <laughs> hallelujah somebody come on give him praise in this place hallelujah bless his holy name in this place hallelujah exalt him in this place he's worthy of your praise he's worthy of your shout he's worthy of your hand clap. He is worthy. Hallelujah. If anybody's worthy, God is worthy. Amen. Amen. Lift your hands up and just thank God. Thank him for what you've heard today. Maybe the Holy Ghost spoke to you and something just thank him just praise him just thank him just praise him thank you lord thank you for what we heard thank you that our lives are not always going to be hijacked by trouble thank you lord that you've delivered us out thank you for the peace of god that rules in our heart like an umpire thank you lord that our negative emotions won't govern our lives but our godly emotions will lead us to be perfected in this peace. Now I want you to go to three people and tell them all is well with you in your house. All is well with you in your house. All is well with you in your house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Let's let's prepare. Let's prepare to give. That, 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 that's the right way right now. <laughs> that's the right way. The Bible says give with a cheerful heart. Not, not out of necessity. And he also says, don't give out of, out of a grudging heart. Somebody says, well, why y'all got to give? Who you think paying for these lights? <laughs> Trump and them ain't sending us no check. <laughs> this is how it happens. It happens by the free love gifts of of what we bring in yep. for it to happen. And believe me, as soon as we get in, we put it to work. You don't believe me? Call tomorrow and ask, ask for your offering back. You know what they're going to tell you? Oh, I'm sorry, sir, it's gone. It's gone. It's working. We put it to work immediately. <laughs> Stealing money. Ain't nothing to steal. 
You break in our safe, ain't nobody alarmed, ain't nothing in there. Why? We put it to work. This ministry is functioning 24 hours a day on seven continents. You understand that? We don't feed people just on Thanksgiving. People are being fed every day. Orphanages are being supported every day. Offices on every continent of the world. Churches all around this world. Ministry going on all of the time. While you are asleep, it is going on. I am here today, but you know, you, most of the time you don't know. I might have flew in nine hours from somewhere just to get back here today. Your seed is vital to the operation of the kingdom in this ministry. And if you're still looking at me based on those narratives, I can't help you. All you got to do is look around to see that things are being put where they need to be put. Amen. I don't know how, how the roof did this week. Then I know they was working on it. It was raining. Did it work? It did good. Did good? Yes, sir. You didn't get wet while you was preaching up here? <laughs> Yeah, that was a million dollar renovation on the roof. New technology, because I don't want y'all coming in here getting dripped on all the time. They almost finished with it. God's good. And if you take care of his house, he'll take care of your house. I believe that. And they call it, they say, call us all kinds of names. Well, you know them. Them people deceive giving. Can't nobody make you give if you don't want to. But they won't ever be able to say that y'all just giving. Taffy and I give. Just as much as we ask you to give, we give too. Let's hold our offerings up right now. Father, this is our seed. We're sowing it in faith. We're giving out of a cheerful heart. <laughs> Not out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And we thank you that this seed will go in the ground and minister. This seed will go in the ground and set people free. It'll take care of and be the provisions for the things that are necessary for us to be able to carry this ministry on. We praise you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're giving by text, the information is on your screen. If you're over the internet, our cyber church, you know the information is on your screen. You can participate as well. And we do. We are so grateful for those of you who are streaming in live, not only from around the country, but also do it through social media. And we welcome you and, and we pray that you have been blessed today and that your life is being transformed by the preaching and the understanding of God's word. And um, so we're getting ready to have an altar call. Somebody says, altar call, what's that? I know, because some churches don't have it anymore. I believe in altar calls, as I said to you over and over again. An altar call is an opportunity for you to respond to the gospel, to respond to the Spirit of God, to respond to what you heard me say or what the Holy Ghost was saying to you. Here's what I'd like to put before you to consider. If you're here today and you're not born again, and today you're ready to make a decision to give your heart to Jesus and to become a born-again Christian. Today, if you'll come to this altar, a place of change, we want to pray with you. We want to lead you. We want to show you how to live this life as Christian people. Secondly, if you're here and you've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we want you to receive that. It's a grace gift. It takes your life to a whole other place. And last but certainly not least, if God's calling you to join this church today, World Changes Church International or World Changes Charlotte, World Changes LA, World Changes Houston, wherever you are this morning, we want you to connect and join with us. Very simply put, ladies and gentlemen, let me just go ahead and be straight. I want to be your pastor. I want to be your pastor. I want, I want to watch over your soul. I want to be the one to make sure you get the teaching and the understanding that, that, that you need to have. Amen? Amen? So you got to make the decision. So at this time, those of you who want to respond in any kind of way, maybe you feel led to rededicate yourself for your own understanding. 
uh, you go ahead, let's do that right now. So get your Bibles, your personal belongings, join me down front here, and we're going to pray and believe God with you. Amen. Come on down. 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 Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Come on. Come on. The devil is a loser. He can't even keep these folks. The devil is losing mothers and fathers and sons and daughters and uncles and aunts and cousins. The devil's a loser. He's a loser. Now, as they continue to come, congregation, I want y'all to help me out. If you could please stand and minister to the people next to you and behind you and around you. And if they need some help coming down, help them come down. Just turn to them, ask them, would you like to be born again? You want to rededicate? You want to join the church? If they say yes, help them come on down, okay? Don't you appreciate those who come down here? Amen. Stretch your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare grace, grace over their lives. We declare every mountain in their lives to be reduced to a plateau. We declare that the blessing of God is working in them, on them, through them, and for them now. And in the name of Jesus, they will never be the same. God, we trust you for them. And we put them into your hands right now. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. At this time, those of you who have come up here and in our other locations, you've got somebody who's going to take you to the prayer room just for a moment. They're going to give you biblical understanding of how to obtain and how to maintain what you came to receive from the Lord. And we believe, God, that you'll never be the same again. So at this time, if you'll follow those individuals with you, Oh, in the dome, if you'll follow this gentleman here to the prayer room, won't take long at all. They're going to minister to you. We're so proud of you, and your lives will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Taffy. Come here, babe. My wife.
My, my wife celebrate we, uh, her birthday this past week, and they want to make a presentation to you today. Yeah, really. Come on, guys. Aww. Aww. Well, Pastor Taffy, we love you so much. And we really appreciate you allowing us to do this. We know normally that you don't like to be out in front and kind of be put on the stage like this, but to allow us to honor you and to wish you a happy birthday and thank you so much for all that you've been to us over the years. We don't take it for granted. We are so appreciative and wanted to give all the congregation the opportunity to, can we sing happy birthday to you? You know, when they did the birthday for October acknowledgement, I, I, I kind of personalized it for myself, but if, if you all want to sing again, you can. There we go. <laughs> Amen. Come on, uh, praise folks and choir. Let's sing it. We wanted to present you with these lovely flowers just as a token of our appreciation and say how much we love you and thank God so much for you. Amen. Thank you all for those who lifted your voice to sing happy birthday to me and all the other October babies that were born. All right. Y'all glad you came today? Uh, Creflo did a great job, FYI, on the birthday week. It was the best ever. It was perfect. Big ups for that. Um, all right. Calling all anointed men of God. Come out to our upcoming men's fellowship November the 3rd at 9 in the youth building across from the dome. Come to be empowered by your brothers in the faith. The last men's fellowship was powerful and life-changing. Why not come to this one? You can register by texting fellowship to 51555. Come and be ready to change someone's world. Winter basketball season is upon us. Uh, the athletic ministry is registering for players 5 to 17 for in-person registration or information for the upcoming season. Stop by the athletic table. You can also text one uh, WCAA 2018 to 51555. Registration will close November the 4th. And for inf uh, additional information, you can email Coleman at worldchangers.org. The holidays are approaching. Um, our food services will be assisting by providing main dishes, side dishes, delicious desserts. And you can visit the information desk in the dome lobby or stop by the fellowship hall for more details concerning that. And um, <clears throat> the soul winning ministry will have a workshop on Super Saturday concerning soul, win soul winning November the 10th at 8 a.m. in the member care conference room number two. And for information, you can call the main number or email soulwinning at worldchangers.org. Also, ladies, we're also... Um, as you saw the announcement earlier about the conference in March, Radical Revolution, Sarah Jakes, Dee Dee Freeman, Toya, Cynthia, Kiera, Miranda Curtis. Um, there'll be transparent workshops, sessions, panels, an upcoming documentary that will be shown and this will be life changing. And so don't forget to go and register, uh, text Radical to 51555. Well, you started your week off in a great way. And we are thankful for you coming out. Let's lift up our hands to prepare to be dismissed. Lord, we thank you for the angels of God that will continue to encamp about us throughout this week. And Father, we just thank you today that we will enjoy the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit that will rest, rule, and abide on the inside of us. So we thank you for the infilling right now that will continue to carry us throughout these days to come. So we thank you for it in Jesus' name and all that agrees said. Amen. Amen. Don't forget about Wednesday night Bible study, Saturday night, 
and next Sunday. We look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. Get ready for your life to be changed. Join Creflo and Taffy Dollar for the last change experience of 2018. And what you ought to be saying to the devil, wish you would. Wish you would try to come and stop what's, what's mine. And I decree in this place today that it's your time to be loose, to be set free from bondage, from intimidation, from inferiority. No, I'm not going to give up. No, I'm not going to kill myself. I declare you be loose. Now I'm not going to quit. I'm an heir of God. It don't look good right now, but I already know what I got coming to me. For one day only, experience this life-changing conference Friday, November 2nd at Crenshaw Christian Center. There will be three powerful sessions, 10 a.m., 2 p.m., and 7 p.m. This event is free, but registration is required. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org to solidify your spot today. See you there.